Today I am going to do diversity of animals. The following figure shows that there is a vast diversity among animals too. Now Puttala, that day can you remember we did diversity among the plants but here today we are going to do the diversity among animals. Okay, let's see this chart. Okay, now here based on living environment habitat we discussed it from about when we are discussing about the plants also here based on the living environment likewise here also can be seen based on living environment habitat terrestrial aquatic air so based on the feeding mechanism okay the feeding mean the way we are eating so from that also we can categorize chew chew mean like a swallow Swallow mean just like gobble. Swallow without chewing. Uh, there are some some animals. They are not they are not chewing like us. They are just swallowing. Chew. Suck. Suck mean just like bees and all. They are sucking nectars from the flowers. So from that also we can categorize based on the type of food. Carnivorous. The animals, the, the who are the animals of eating flesh, we are calling carnivorous, omnivorous, herbivorous. Okay, omnivorous mean mixed feeders. Herbivorous mean just like cows, deers, and all. Based on external characteristics, color, shape, appendages. Based on the mode of locomotion. Walking like us, swimming, fish, flying, birds, creeping just like reptiles and all. You will learn more about the diversity among the animals and plants in your upper grades. Diversity among animals and plants is a very important factor for the environment. Okay, Putala, when you were in grade 5, grade 4, grade 3, even grade 2, you learn many more about the diversity among the animals and the plants. Can you remember? So, diversity means Putala, the differences among the animals and the plants is very very important factor for the environment. It increases the beauty of the nature too. Just think like this. So, if they don't have the diversity of the environment, so it will be the same. Okay, you just go to the, you just go to your home garden and you just look around, then you can see butterflies, small butterflies are flying and birds are flying and bees, especially if you have a pet dog. So, his monument and the feature and the way he is eating, when we are comparing with the butterfly and all, so you can see the diversity of them, no? So, it adds beauty to the environment. So, it is our responsibility to care for and conserve the animals and the plants. You must not discharge harmful materials to the environment. Hence, you too can take part in protecting the wonder of the nature. You have to protect the nature. Okay, so there's an activity 1.7. Study some plants and animals and identify the differences between them. You have to observe some plants and the animals. Okay, then you have to identify the differences between them. Fill in the following grid using the data you gathered. Now here characteristics of plants, characteristics of animals. So you have to compare and write. Compare the following table with the table you completed about. Okay, now already you have completed the table and you have the comp you have to compare the following table with the table you completed about. You have to check this table after you completed this. So then you have to compare. Now characteristics of plants. Plants grow fixed to the ground. They do not show locomotion because they can't walk like you, but show movements. Okay, locomotion means going place to another. If I explain in your um, words, locomotion means going place to another place. Okay, and here plants grow fixed to the ground because they can't walk like you, plants. 
but show movements but plants show movements characteristics of animals animals show locomotion okay now you have a pet dog if or a pet cat they can move here to there now here characteristic of plant produce their own food by photosynthesis hence they are autotrophic okay now if you have uh, some rose flower or else if you have some flowers or else if you have avocado tree guava tree in your home garden so you can observe this because they never ask you food ne here we need food we need food we feel hungry they they never ask they won't never ask from you ne but here if you have a pet cat or pet dog at your home surely they ask they will last food from you no so do not produce their own food depend on other plants and animals for food hence they are called heterotrophic plants autotrophic because they are producing their own food by themselves but animals they can't produce food by them one so they are calling it as heterotrophic okay chlorophyll is present within the cells okay chlorophyll is present within the cells okay what's the meaning of chlorophyll chlorophyll means putala harta prada okay there are a chlorophyll is present within the cells that is the specific feature of a plant now here animals chlorophyll is absent within the cells we also a human we also animal but we don't have chlorophyll in our cells growth is visible during the entire life span thus growth is unlimited okay here under the characteristics of plant growth of growth is visible we can see the growth of them during the entire life span okay so thus therefore growth is unlimited we can't measure their growth and here growth in animals visibly stops after a certain period of time growth in animals visibly stops after a certain period of time okay but here we started our life as an infant finally kid small kid and now you are as that mean now you are a school student then you have to face as a as a teenager then you have to face, go for the young age middle age old age so finally it will finish but that's the certain period of time no it visibly stops we can see the changes visibly stop but the growth of a plant is unlimited okay growth in animals visibly stops after a certain period of time now here as i told you already infant and here after that all age may be all age that mean here we can see middle age or young age that mean well matured man and here growth is visible during the entire life span now here you can see here it's visible dichotomous case it is very easy to use dichotomous case to classify and identify organisms categorizations of organisms using the presence of absence of characteristics feature is known as dichotomous case okay uh, so it is more suitable to external features that can be easily observed following figure shows how dichotomous key used to classify and identify some leaves so there are many more leaves leaves with leaflets okay leaves without leaflets mm, okay and you can see leaves are divided at one place here this is the stem here it divided into three parts leaflets are divided at different places here this is the leaflet different places just like curry leaves leaves with pointed tip ah here you can see here 
leaves with pointed tip leaves without a pointed tip now here they don't have pointed tip like this bow leaf leaves with wavy blades now you can see here just like blades here just like wavy blades leaves without wavy blades here they don't have here jack leaf just a jack leaf here no no wavy wavy blades following dichotomous key choose a classification of some animals parrot earthworm dog centipede deer crow with four legs okay dog deer they have four legs dog deer now here with antlers deer without antlers do okay what's the meaning of antlers so uh, if i explain if i tell another word just like not actually so horns just like horns and they have antlers deer and without antlers do and here without four legs parrot earthworm centipede crow they have they don't have four legs with wings crow parrot they have wings without wings earthworm centipede they don't have wings with a curved beak curved beak parrot has a curved beak but beak crow they don't have curved beak like parrot with legs okay now here they categorize by wings and here they categorize by legs okay with legs centipede without legs earthworm centipede centipede has legs and earthworm does not have worm legs okay now here legs here with four legs without four legs okay with antlers without antlers with wings without wings with the curved curved beak without curved beak with legs without legs okay now there is an assignment 1.7 select six plant from the school garden and prepare a dichotomous key to classify them show you dichotomous key your teacher summary there are living things organisms as well as non living things in our environment now you know organisms can be classified into three major groups such as plants animals and microorganism this is very very important they will surely ask in your term test paper to mention about three major groups so you have to write plants animals and microorganisms okay growth nutrition respiration movements and reproduction are the main characteristics of living organism this is this one also very important if they ask you to mention about the main characteristics of living organism so surely you have to write growth can be seen nutrition respiration and uh, respiration movements and reproduction there are many differences between plants and animals there is a vast diversity among animals as well as among plants okay dichotomous key can be used to classify and and identify plants and animals okay now there is an exercise okay putala next day i hope to come with the second lesson of your grade 6 science book that is things around us see you soon